Well, good morning. Good morning. Let's do that again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, perfect. I love the waves. Thank you for that. It is uh, the almost Lent. We have two more Sundays this Sunday and next Sunday, and then we start Lent. It's amazing. For me, it's still almost Christmas, so there you are. But um, during this season of Epiphany, we witness who Jesus is. That's the point of the season. We see him baptized. We see him call his disciples. We tell, see him call us the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And today we hear about the way to life. Next Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday in which we see his glory shine on the mountaintop. Um, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, which is February 22nd. At 10 o'clock on Ash Wednesday, we will hold a Zoom worship service about Ash Wednesday itself. It's an ancient liturgy and it feels ancient as we do it. It's very intriguing and interesting. But because of the difficulty of getting ashes to everyone, I suggest we use olive oil or water or ashes if you can collect your own to mark our foreheads with the cross. Um, and I hope you'll try to attend this service. It's uh, Wednesday, February 22nd on Zoom at 10 o'clock. I have a correction in the bulletin. I know that's not at all unusual. Um, if you turn to page 10 in your bulletin right now, uh, you'll see the Thanksgiving at the table. It's perfect, no problem. But if you turn the page to page 11, we see the whole thing. So it's a big surprise. It looks like we're gonna do it twice, we're not. So if you cross out that in your mind, we're not going to do the liturgy at the table twice. We'll skip down to where it's the proclamation of the mystery of faith. Do you see what I mean? I'll remind you when we get there, but I thought I'd confess it right up front. I have some notes on the health of our members. If you, you notice, I know that um, Vern is there. He's turbocharged. He, you, you need to hear, hear why. He is just amazing that he's here at all. And he's got a turbo pump along with his stints in his heart. He's just amazing. Um, Marty Vega, she's a good friend of a lot of ours. She's been in the hospital with a wound on her leg that she's had a couple surgeries and she's taking PT and she should be back home this week, which is a miracle. Gary may be here next week in a wheelchair, but he might be here. It's kind of exciting. My daughter, Christina, is better. So we have some good news, mighty prayer warriors that you are. And I thank you for your constant prayers. Um, our musicians today are Jerry and Dennis. Dale, I'm not sure. I don't think he's here. I haven't seen him. And Gary won't be back until next week. Our worship leader's assisting minister is Darcy. Uh, Brick is our reader. Uh, communion team, it includes Darcy uh, with the bread, Vern the wine, and Trink with a tray. And it is Pat Panay's birthday. Is she here? Is she there in the in the room? No? Then we're going to have to sing to her next week because she's such an important member of our congregation. Are there any other announcements? Looks like someone's moving. I have two different announcements, one about hospitality, but something that I was very pleased with St. Joseph's about. And I think as Christians, we all should know this. They now have a patient guide. And if you're lucky enough to stay overnight like Vern did, you get one. And so <laughs> I decided to read it. And for those of you that have been in the community for some time, know that St. Joseph's was meant to be Christ-based. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, the new CEO has put back in the statements on their, shall we say, their first paragraph of two sections about them being Christ-based. The first one states, as expressions of God's healing love witnessed through the ministry of Jesus, we are steadfast in serving all, especially those who are poor and vulnerable. And then it also goes on to state, we reach out to those in need and offer comfort as Jesus did. We nurture the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of one another 
and those we serve who are healing presence, we accompany those who suffer. The brochure also adds that they have now rehired chaplains back. So if okay. you have any prayer needs, it'll be right there at the hospital. And <clears throat> in fact, they have this little card that's given to everybody, even like when Vern was just there for part of the day that you can make prayer requests. So I, that was one of the things when I first came up here and I went to St. Joseph's the first year and they had the statue of Jesus. I thought, well, he's here too, just along with me, you know, just that visual kind of thing. So if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to borrow this book. I've read it and just pass it around amongst our members because we don't want any of you in the hospital to get one of these because that's the only way. <laughs> one. I like now that. to my role is hospitality. You may have seen a Facebook post or I don't know if it's in the newspaper or something. The, so the Soquis family is having a celebration of the life of uh, Darcy Siddle is my, uh, my brother. His brother's wife. <laughs> yeah. And so she would like to, she's going to be at the fireside room. It'll be just a celebration of life on the 25th. I don't have a sign up sheet for it yet, but if you're willing to help out, um, we are going to have two kind of times for you. You can come at two to three to help with the setup or five to six to help with the cleanup. So I'll have two separate sign ups for that. But what I'm going to be passing around, I think I had mentioned, we're going to do our soup supper for Lent. And um, we're going to have one in February and one in March, actually on the same exact number. So you can't forget 19. It was planned that way for all of us that are getting older and have trouble with numbers like me. <laughs> Anyhow, I am limiting the amount of soup because when we tried it last year, we ended up with people bringing too much soup and so they took a lot home. So if you don't have an opportunity to sign up on a place, I have a statement down here that you can read that during Lent, let Holden Village, which is our Lutheran camp that's up in Washington, do during Lent. They actually serve soup and then all the money they save, if they had served a big meal to everybody that's the camp, goes to help the people in their community. So our money, I think you have your jar around? I believe the jar. Yeah. She has a jar. Jarcy has a jar already. So if you don't sign up for soup or if you want to make a donation, it will go into that jar for the Boys and Girls Club. So I think that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other announcements that need to be made? And if Pat Panay is not here, we're going to have to sing to her next, next week. But now let's begin our worship with the prelude by Jerry.
That was beautiful. Thank you, Jerry. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I forgot one update on one of our members, our faithful Zoomer, Tom Roy, who's been having some difficulty with heart and um, stroke, I think. Anyway, he's at the doctor appointment right now on Sunday, which is unusual. So keep him in your prayer as well, because there's something on his last test about his heart. And so we need to remember that. So let us stand for the greeting and peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We'll continue with our gathering hymn, Come Fill Our Hearts. Come and fill our hearts with your peace, you alone. confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our faith, our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin ourselves we have not practiced your righteousness our hearts have turned away from you for the sake of the world you so love forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name amen, amen. thus says our god the former things have come to pass and new things, I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our next hymn is, O oh God, our help in ages past.
Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you. Because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Time for special music by Jerry and Dennis. Our walk on earth is following Jesus and doing his will. To do your will is my desire to live in you is my life to spread your love through all the earth to find in you the joy of life you know me well my wandering ways because you declares your praise amazing grace how sweet the sound when I was lost love did abound new fashioned eyes to see your grace I offer now my life to you to build with me what you should do replace my yoke with the one you bear remove the fear with courage Lord. we walk by faith and not by sight, with gracious words draw near. Oh, Christ, you spoke as none e'er spoke. My peace be with you here. Help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound. And seek where you are found for you O resurrected Lord you were found in means divine beneath the water and the word beneath the bread and wine and when our life of faith is done in realms of clear light, may we behold you as you are with full and endless sight. May we behold you as you with full and endless sight. That was wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. 
We'll continue now with the readings. Brick is our reader today. The first reading is from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verses 15 through 20. The Lord sets before the people of God a clear choice. Life and prosperity will come to the faithful. Loss of land will be the consequence of disobedience. Choosing life entails loving and holding fast to the Lord. Life in God's presence presupposes the promises made to the ancestors. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord our God will bless you, and the land that you are entering to possess. But if, if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. <coughs> Excuse me. But that means life to you and length of days so you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Happy are those who are blameless, who follow the teachings of the Lord. Happy are Happy they, they who observe your decrees, decrees and, and seek you with all their Amen. hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. You have laid Amen. down your commandments that you should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame. Then when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your great righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. You will thoroughly forsake me. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 1 through 9. Human leaders in the church are not the ones who control ministry. Rather, they are co-workers who belong to God. The one who truly controls and continuously empowers the ministry of the church. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still in the flesh. You're still of the flesh. For as long as you, is there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to the human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another says, I belong to Apollos, you are not merely, you are not merely human. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants, for whom you come to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos's, Apollos, watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants or the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For as we are God's servants working together, we are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. We'll continue with the last reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, 
You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last sentence, last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than your whole body to go into hell. It is also says, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, commits her to commit, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, don't swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God's people, the Hebrews, stood on the far side of the Jordan River and anxiously waited to cross over to the promised land. It was then that Moses gave his last sermon, ending with the words, choose life, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Choose life, Moses said. Loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him means life to you. That's the theme of the first and, and last reading for today. For there we heard a lot about God's law. And those readings are about the same thing, the love God continuously showers on us. For God gives the law for our sake. So we may live the abundant life that the Lord intends for us. That's what St. Paul calls the life that really is life. In the last reading, Jesus expanded the understanding of the law that Moses, or that God had handed to Moses. For Jesus said, it's not enough to avoid murdering. For what the law demands is that we always treat each other with respect. He said, it's not enough to avoid committing adultery. For what the law demands is that we never use others as a way to satisfy our desires. Jesus said, it's not enough to follow the letter of the law regarding divorce. For what the law demands is that we never treat others as disposable and instead provide for their needs. And Jesus said, it's not enough to keep ourselves from swearing falsely or lying to others. For what the law demands is that we speak truthfully and act truthfully in all things. And then to emphasize the importance of God's law and how much better our lives would be if we followed it, Jesus used scary and exaggerated metaphors of cutting off body parts and burning in hell. Too bad, that I think, that so many of us have focused on those metaphors and have overlooked 
God's love and value of us. We too often envision God as an angry old man, so disapproving of us that he sternly makes a list and checks it twice, like Santa Claus in that children's Christmas song, who knows when we've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. But that's not the God revealed in scripture. There we see that God loves us like parents love their children, that God wants to protect and help us so we may get infinitely more out of our lives than we could otherwise. In scripture, we learn that the law isn't the way to earn a place in God's kingdom, but as a precious gift of a caring parent given to beloved children, urging them to treat each other well. Reverend, Reverend Dr. David Lose tells a story about his friend, Frank, a story which brings to mind the parental love and parental heart of God, who only desires the health and happiness of his people. The story goes that once when he was eight years old, Frank's argument had a, this terrible argument with his little sister and it turned physical. Frank pinned her to the, gar to the floor and raised his fist in the air. His mother saw him and screamed, stop. That with fist raised, Frank yelled back, she's my sister. I can do anything I want to her. Frank's mother towered over him and forcefully said, she's my daughter and no, you can't. She's my daughter and no, you can't. That's like God's law that protects and cares for the lives of people, including us. Jesus summarized all of God's law in another text that where he commanded us to love God and one another. For God says to you and to me, no, you can't hoard everything. No, you can't discriminate and exclude. No, you can't violate and exploit. She's my daughter and he's my son, God proclaimed. Hundreds of years ago, after Moses had stood on the bank of that Jordan River and urged his people to choose life, God came to us as his son, Jesus, as a law. Jesus came as a law of God's love, born in human flesh. You see, God saw how we humans misunderstood and disobeyed his law. For God saw it wasn't working as well as it should. So God became human as Jesus Christ to live and die and rise again, to give us the life that really is life, a life for now and always. For God's love is law and God's love is also gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. During my final and truly difficult faculty interview before graduating from the seminary and entering the synodical placement system, one of the professors asked me, since Lutheran theology declares that God's words are law and gospel, what separates them? Terrible question. So I nervously answered, nothing. Nothing separates them. There are two parts of love. God's law is his love that protects us from ourselves and that God's gospel is his love that restores us when we sin. And then the professor said, well, I see you were actually paying attention in class. You don't know how relieved I was. You see, in Jesus Christ, we see God's love, a law of love and life poured out for the whole entire world and made real for all people. For, she, for in Jesus, we see how far God will go to bring us that life and that love, that priceless grace. Finally, as God's people, we are called to make God's love known through our words and our deeds as we point others to the life that really is life. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. The song is, the next hymn is That Priceless Grace. Please stand as we sing.
around the world, let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children, new believers, new missionaries, or two missionaries and bishops, shape lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in our ways, in your ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nourish your creation, accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers, provide for substance uh, farmers facing drought and climate changes. Guide the work of agricultural scientists, Toward sustainable ways to feed the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give growth where there seems to be no hope for life. In nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible, empower peacemakers with your spirit. Whereas death holds sways through violence, disease, hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope merciful god receive our prayers nurture all in need bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destruction destructive relationships grant healing to those who suffer from grief illnesses and medical conditions merciful god Receive our prayer. Encourage this congregation. Call us to the common purpose to keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts towards you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Let us continue to keep our members in prayer and our members and friends of Calvary, Bob Showquist, Vern and Dorothy Shaughnessy, Carl and Carol Steves, Brian Steves, Ken and Kay's daughter, Carol Tuberna, Deborah Taylor, members and friends serving in the military, Carrie Egan, our partners in ministry, Christ Lutheran Church, our saviors, Emmanuel Lutheran, Lutheran Church of Arcata, Grace Good Shepherd, Reverend Claire Burkhart, Intern Bishop, Sierra Pacific Synod, ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. Thanks be to you for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of your eternal life with you merciful god receive our prayer 
We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for special music. Thank you, Terry. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. We give, we give thanks for all your works of merciful power and ask you to shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify and adore you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We begin our communion liturgy, the Thanksgiving at the table. Those of you who will be, use, will be going up to the altar rail, please stand. Those who will be using individual or sanitizing, uh, sanitized elements, please sit. Please, please stand if you are able. Let us begin together as we make the sign of the cross as these words are said. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Oh, don't do that. Sorry, blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Bread of Christ broken for you.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the part you skip down a little ways. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May be seated as I offer a blessing for those who have communed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now an invitation for the rest of you. The table is set and all are welcome. We come and taste the joy of God. Please come. Blessed be the time that binds our hearts in Christian love, the unity of I and mine is like to that above.
Let us pray. Lord, it is good for us to be here, for we have tasted your glory in this holy meal. Continue your goodness as we go out from here. Open our eyes to see your face shining in every person and send us to be your servants in every place. You are the life and light of all, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our sending, home, sending hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the postlude.
Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for all your wonderful music. We so appreciate it. Okay, Zoomers, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Go in peace, make God's love known. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Oh, wonderful, as always. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you for the worship leaders and for the musicians and especially for all of you. What a wonderful congregation. God bless you all. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.